Now, we can confidently say that Ghana has bounced back to the days of vehicle assembly, reshaping the automobile industry to create jobs while industrializing the economy. Since the establishment of an automobile bill in Ghana, we've engaged almost all the players in the automotive industry, from the new assemblers to the second-hand dealers. Now, today we take you to the second-hand vehicles market in the United States to better understand what has changed in terms of pricing and other related matters. We have Isaac Achiampo, who buys from the auction market in the U.S. and exports to Ghana for his clients. He joins us virtually for this discussion. Uh, welcome to the program. First of all, you have been dealing in this business for the past 15 years, if I do get it right. What has changed for you now that Ghana is ready by October to ban the importation of overage vehicles? Well, there's a lot of uncertainty going on in the market right now due to the fact that um, about 80% of the vehicles that we um, uh, import to Ghana are usually salvage vehicles because it's the most affordable by the um, low wages, you know, citizens of the country. And now, due to the fact that the new bill um, seeks to ban all importations of um, we are, I have about 10 orders on hold because by the time the vehicle gets to Ghana, um, the, it will be affected uh, by the new bill, meaning that um, they cannot um, clear the cars from the port. So the, the market is really um, hanging on a thread right now. We do have uh, the automotive bill currently in Ghana, and it has various sections which was passed by parliament i don't know if you've really read the entire bill but what's your response to this entire bill that has been drafted to regulate the automobile industry i believe that the bill um has uh, you know um a lot of positive um consequences for the country especially um having new manufacturers you know coming to ghana to try to create jobs however um, I tried to pull the bill. Since I first heard about it, I went online and tried to pull the bill myself to read it, but the bill was nowhere to be found. So I just read bits and pieces from various news outlets and kind of put together what um, is really in the bill. And what I noticed is that in, in an effort to bring in new manufacturing jobs in Ghana, the used car dealers and, and um, um, body works and mechanics are going to suffer deeply with this bill because, um, as you know, when accident vehicles come into the uh, country, they need body work done, um, they need painting, and um, and, and with, by so doing, cutting all salvage vehicles, this is um, going to reduce the amount of work that the laborers, as far as used car mechanics and um, uh, used car dealers, are going to take a huge hit, you know, um, with this new bill. Mm. Isaac, uh, just, just stand by because we've also been joined by Novi Hoho Douglas, who is also on the other uh, side to share his side of the story uh, to us. So, Douglas, uh, welcome to the program. There's been a drop in new, in new car production uh, rates by automobile giants, causing a surge in demand for second hand vehicles. These are some of the claims we're hearing on the ground. Now, how is the current market doing in terms of pricing? Uh, thank you very much. I'm so grateful. Um, currently, I would say it is bad. It is bad because um, of the announcement of the uh, banding of importation of used cars. I would not use the word savage cars because the cars we bring in, they're not savage cars. Are they overrated? Are they overrated? They're misleading a lot of people, savage to used cars. If you say savage, what are you talking about? Savage is something that is out of use. It can't be used any longer. But the cars we bring are practically cars that are just having a problem, the fender going off, a bump going off, or something. Those cars that you're showing are a ripoff. And these cars are old vehicles. So if you want to sell new cars compared to used cars, how many people have deep pockets that can afford to purchase new vehicles? 
Right. To tell you what, I have do some document lying on my table right now, which I'll, I'll put it to your mail one of the days, which talks about the reason why Germany is bringing in those vehicles for us to use. You know, I was in Germany last year, and they are pushing every petrol car from their system. So they are bringing in the electronic vehicles. Every car that is being sold there now are electronic vehicles. All right. So if if you are bringing this in here for us to suffer, meanwhile, we, we can't. It's not everybody who can sub, um, pay that amount of buying forty-eight thousand dollars, sixty-eight thousand dollars for a, a vehicle. And somebody has about five to seven thousand. Well, 10, Douglas, uh, Douglas, we I have just, we, we have seen uh, most of these vehicles been assembled in Ghana, and we have seen the right. price ranges. In fact, the the least you could imagine is going for forty thousand CDs, not dollars. Forty thousand CDs. Forty thousand CDs. Sixty thousand CDs, I should rather say. But beyond that, Douglas, right. if you read the bill, you know closely, the government, together with private sector, they are making a strong case that. People like you who engage in the automobile business, you still have a chance to tap into the gold mine of Ghana's you know, automobile industry. They are arguing that with these new assembly points coming in sale, you could benefit from the value chain. You know, honestly, it, 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 is just, it, it is just a border to the businessmen. Because if you are selling a car 60,000 Ghana cities, Excluding tax. Go excluding on. Excluding tax. So if it's excluding tax, you just have the face value of 60,000 Ghana cities. And you bring a, a car, a used car, and you can pay less than 60,000 Ghana cities. And you can have equal match with that car parked there at the showroom. Yes, we have different people who want to buy flashy, new, modern car. But somebody want to go with a normal high status car, which is okay in a deep pocket, highest can go is twenty thousand or twenty five thousand, not in a mid of sixty thousand. So what do happens to the other people? I read the bill, and the bill is capitalizing on savage cars and old cars. Right. How many people are going to bring old cars into the system? Interesting. Over 10 years. Interesting. Who's, who's going to do that? Let me, bring in, let me bring in Isaac now. Now, Isaac, there has been a drop in new car production by automobile giant causing a surge in demand for second hand vehicles. Now, how is the current market doing in terms of pricing? Well, right now, used cars have um, went up about 30% since the pandemic. And the yes. reason being is that um, uh, the parts and logistics went down. You know, most of the parts um, used in a new car manufacturing come from Asia. And due to the pandemic, um, everything was shut down. So now the demand is high for used cars. And in so yes. soon, um, the prices at, at the auction and at the um, sure. used car lots here in the U.S. have went up about 30%. Exactly. Gentlemen, so even indicative of the need for us to even boost local production here in Ghana? Any no. of you could take it up? No. You see, um, we're looking at creating jobs. Beautiful. It is awesome. But are you creating the jobs at the parents or others? Right. Or you are creating the jobs because you want to make a name? That's you want debatable. To create the that's name debatable. Or want to create that that, that, that's, that's debatable. Beautiful. But, you know... Uh, but, are you are you not sabotaging other people's business? Well, government keeps government keeps reiterating the fact that they're not sabot sabotaging businesses. They're rather giving you a new strain of business within the value chain of the country's automobile, the niche automobile market. But le let me bring you in, uh, Douglas. There has been various concerns about the cost involved in getting a vehicle, even if it's secondhand. People say right. so, it's so much expensive. Is it the case in the U.S.? And probably what factors do you consider in pricing a car? Good. So, so uh, I, have, I have charts. Okay, sorry. Okay, so the, the problem is um, 
90% of the people, when they contact you in the U.S. and they want a vehicle, what's the number one uh, car that everybody wants? It's Toyota, right? Exactly. And now, due to the demand, Toyota price has skyrocketed. I went to the auction and bought um, an American car, a, a 2010 Buick, with 90,000 miles oh, yeah. on it, okay? Yeah. Those cars are very reliable. I paid um, four thousand U.S. Do uh, dollars for the car, but there was a two thousand um, seven Toyota Camry that went for forty five hundred uh, uh, dollars with um, over one hundred and fifty thousand miles on it. Right. Okay, so it, it, uh, people will have to adjust their views on other cars, saying, "Oh, these cars are not good." When it comes to vehicles. Um, when it hits about 150,000 miles, the automaker calls it that it has exceeded its mechanical limit. Great. Meaning you have to start maintaining the vehicle. If you drive any car and you don't change the oil and you don't make um, maintenance, the car is not going to last. You get what you put in. So Interesting. That's, that's my view on it. Interesting. But, you know, your views are, you know, very much um, helpful uh, within this discussion. But... We have seen government instituted the bills, they've legislated the movement. And what this means is that the importation of salvaged overage vehicles are going to be much more of a challenge for both of you guys. Moving forward, how best are you going to survive moving forward? Now that your business is on, on the line, as you stated, Douglas. All right, so uh, moving forward, I'll, we're pledging to government to to tweak it a little bit. See, yeah. it is, I have a, I have a, a, a sheet that I'll share with you. We have range it. We have, it's labeled uh, run, a uh, drive and run. And it's labeled not runnable. It is also labeled not definable. If you have these two labels, you can't drive it. You can't bring it in, right. as my brother was saying. Yeah. You can't get a car that is not running into the system. All right. So, so, so Douglas, Douglas, I feel so you have made forward, a point. We'll the fact that you're pleading, you're pleading with governments to help you. What about you, Isaac? What's going to be the yeah. way forward for you? So when, when they came up with this bill, they put a blanket um, on savage vehicles. Like Douglas was saying, yeah. when it comes to savage vehicles, there are different aspects of it. Some has, has been in a flood. Some has right. been uh, in fire damage. You know, exactly. and some just have a little bumper problem. I, I believe the government, this bill, in my opinion, lacks a lot of uh, um, details, okay? True. So they, they need to make um, some ex exemptions All right. for some of these cars called savage vehicles. Because Great. if the car just need a, a front bumper cover, Great. Gentlemen, why I think can I just uh, we buy have exhausted our time. Put it on and drive it? We have exhausted our time. Your points have been clearly made. Uh, grateful having you on board, Isaac and Douglas. They are both second-hand car dealers expressing their frustration over the new automobile bill which bans the importation of salvaged and overage cars. Many thanks, gentlemen, for being here with us. But